the game was played out by them in such an overpowering fashion. So far, doesn't look like anything is changing. Yeah, I would say maybe get rid of that cannon, although I don't know if you want to give that over to Zeus. It didn't necessarily get used to the most uh, impactful. But so far, Salty one back on the cards. Yeah. Kept waiting for the, like, the big mad fight where they're going to all in there. But um, all right. So far, yep. Run back the cannon. Happy to run back the Cassante. Zeus did get a solo kill on him, as well as have a lot of uh, you know, stabilizing plays for T1. Played a really good front line for them. Goomba, no questions it. about the Aphelios play. So they insta run back that one. And so far, no big changes coming up here in the first part of the draft. And I think there's good reason for that from T1 side. T1 are saying, okay, you outplayed us a bunch in the early game. Your bottom lane plays, well, well done, he'll say. You know, they're like, hats off to you. But they have the confidence that they just outplayed Mad Lions for the last 15 minutes straight of that game in team fight after team fight. And so they're confident to do it again. Mad Lions are thinking the flip of that, okay, we just have to not throw. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because we had our big early lead. I'm also happy to see the Annie pivot. I do not believe Niski had the greatest impact on that champion. I also think into really coordinated, really calculated teams like the LCKs, Annie's just very linear, very predictable. Also, Niski ate like a thousand hooks. So immediately in phase two, Pike is banned away, and this is the biggest significant change from game number one. Uh, and one that I think really speaks to uh, T1 also identifying that we got away with it in the last game. We will not be able to get away with it again. Pike being taken away means that uh, with the Zaya already there, Guma and Scaria should be feeling safe in the game number one. And Faker, early game might not have been what they were looking for, but that team fight carrying that he did was incredible. These are like solo queue reactions where you're just yeah. banning out the thing that hooked you in the last game. Hellasen <laughs> kept hooking T1. They're like, I'm never playing versus that again. Get, get that off me. Come on, just ban Thresh. Faker, every hook champion's gone, right? Faker kept landing hooks on the Mad Lions and ulting to start all their team fights set up for Guma. So Mad Lions do the same thing, banning that out. Oh, and the Annie is still going to get taken away. Now, there is, of course, still the potential that the Cassante will be flexed. So, expected to see either the Viego uh, is one that we talked about previously. This was something that T1 was hovering. More of a Gen G pick, but with the amount of attention that T1 have shown uh, thus far towards Guma, Maokai makes complete sense. Ex uh, extremely safe pick is able to provide reliable frontline as well as engage. Okay, I'm expecting T1 to get some damage for Faker then, because oh, yeah. if they full, if they did straight one person carry, uh, then it would be pretty difficult there. I mean, as good as Guma did play, but Maokai going to have significantly less damage. So we'll see what Faker with the counter pick wants to run into Niski here. Niski's going to have to show right now what's his blind into Faker. And looking at Hellasang, by the way, he's locked in that rel. 700 professional games for Hellasang. 20 of them or rather correction, 18 of them have been on the rail. So it's definitely not something we see a significant amount from him. He does have a fairly high 60% win ratio. Lissandra will be that pick in the mid lane. You talked about the blind pick. And the last couple of seconds here, <laughs> 41. We're gonna find out what runs mid lane. We have seen a little bit more just on a mid in the past, and it's going to be locked in for the Karma there now. So Karma mid, Lulu bottom. That is a bit lower damage than I was going for, but it is Super duper buff up Guma Yushi here. Are they going to flex it to have Faker with the Cassante mid matchup? Ooh, I, what do you prefer? Uh, I actually really liked the uh, Carmine mid, because I think that Lissandra, if she doesn't get out of her lane, and if she's continuously shoved underneath the turret, which generally Karma will be able to, then impacting the map becomes a lot harder. But the same can be said for Kenna, right? Kenna can struggle in matchups where he's not able to really leverage a range advantage, where he can't reliably outpoke the opponent. So. Uh, really big pivot here from T1. And in game number one, uh, all, uh, all eggs were in the basket of Gumiyoshi. And in game number two, <laughs> all eggs are more in them. They yeah, found more, more, eggs. more eggs. They, they found more eggs and they handed them to Guma. And Guma has not dropped an egg since he was handed any of them. I mean, them, they so. do tell you to not keep all your eggs in one basket. But Mint combos there. Uh, so should be easy, more easily reacted to by Guma. Well, we're going to find out as we load onto the rift. If I can take a very brief moment to celebrate something, assuming no action breaks out. Faker, Faker, Playmaker. God King himself has reached his 200th international game. And right now, he's looking to make it 2-0 against the Mad Lions. And <laughs> as I say that, the gift is given that owner concedes 50!
blood to Matt. Uh, <laughs> That's the, not my fault. The, the crash down is not telegraphed if you're in a bush and they walk up to your nice. breath. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, um, a horse falls out of the sky onto your head and they give the first blood money over to Karzi because they have this luxury. Oh, no, actually, no, the it went, Ignite. Yeah, went to no, him the Ignite tick. Yes. Oh, they tried to give it over to him. Okay, Ignite tick does its work. And it kind of ties into what we saw in the previous early game. I think T1 really need to start taking less early game risks and, and just running around like the map belongs to them because Mad are clearly saying, we do not stand for that. Well, we do not stand for that. Mad Lions getting a bit of deja vu. Starting the game off with an early kill onto a T1. This time uh -huh. it was in the jungle instead of the bottom lane. Give you a quick update, by the way. 50 kills in that previous game. It's the highest number of kills at MSI this year, obviously. It is also the fifth the bloodiest game of any MSI ever. That is how action-packed it was. And it started off strong. Guma and Keria were stepping to trade a little bit. And you can see Alyoya, he spotted on that ward. Only fifth, Trevor? Only we can fifth. do better. We can do yes, better. Yes, come on. Let's make the next five games 5-4-3-2-1 five, in terms of bloodiness. And that seems to be the case for now. Once again, by the way, uh, Ona starting top half of the map, Alyoya clearing out the crags on the bottom. This time around, though, T1 is very aware. Did sp uh, spot Alyoya on the ward. Uh, so, should be completely fine here. It looks like Oya also realizing that, heading towards the Raptors. Yeah, uh, T1 very clearly that, that whole time thinking about these adjustments all around bottom lane early because that was the whole story for Mad Lions. So, not only do they ban the pike, they also deep ward the Krugs, they also have them get the chunk on bottom side. They didn't necessarily plan for the first blood, but. No one plans to concede first blood, to be fair. Um, I will say, by the way, if you keep an eye on the minimap, because we've got the Karma top into the cannon, it might be a lane that we want to keep an eye on just a little bit more. Thank you, Observers, for that one. Also, because for Chasey, I think expectations here, especially for European fans here in London watching, that was Chasey's first defeat on cannon in his career. It was his ninth game played. This is now his tenth. Playing into the Karma, this is not something that we see a huge hell of a lot in the LEC. And we already see being bullied, being pushed forward, there's a mantra cues. Tell you what, I also haven't seen a whole lot of it in the LCK. <laughs> for, a really, for, a really, for a really long time, right? And uh, Zayus is a player that has struggled at times in high pressure situations. And this is now previously the Xante game. And in this one, he is going full support. For this man that was just on your screen a second ago there, Guma, as they're pushing in, they're having much better lane phase this time around, obviously, with all the adjustments. Uh, getting up to the tower, tower pressure in their favor actually, and owner since he started on that top side with the Maokai, easy, leisurely clear towards the bottom side, splits the scuttle crabs exactly how they want with Mad Lions, and El Yoya does get this one. Faker's gonna be the target, but both junglers are here. All right, 2v2, glacial path forward, ring of pro frost rather, onto the little kitty cat. Pressure on the bottom lane, Kazi's under threat, forced to flash for his life, and the flamethrower just out of range. Faker, tick, tick, tick. The shield's healing him for alive for now. No flash for Niski. The sapling toss will go forward. Oh. That's the flash, Bramble toss, smash. Ona gets one back, and now Niski's in a little bit of trouble. Starting to back away, he's low on Matt. It does not want that fight. And this is the other part of the puzzle last game for Matt. It wasn't just that bot lane was winning. It was that the mid lane 2v2 went extremely heavily in favor of Matt. This time around, T1 is able to get out ahead. And bear in mind, that was Hillison that had first blood, still getting beaten up in that 2v2. T1 500 gold up, bottom lane winning. Gank mid lane su successful. And Zayus in the top lane, keeping Chasey under the tower. Yeah, the only hiccup there for T1, I think Carrier healed when he maybe he thought he had Ignite or something as Karzi was flashing away. Regardless, it's still a big, uh, good trade for them. And the CS difference is going to be massive, plus the recall timings here. Boots level two, Berserker Grieve rush for Guma, but mid lane dive, Hilly's here! Ferromancy crash down, ticking, it's El Yoya with the kill. Oh, Hillisen will get taken down though. And it's secured by Faker. Now Yoya the target. Kuma is ticking away. He's got the purple gun, got the root down, and got the backup of T1. Another kill to Guma. Yeah, the timing of that dive and the extra turret shot there. Guma's walking back from base off his reset with his upgraded Berserker Greaves and gets to be handed an extra kill. That is exactly what Mad Lions do not want. It's but money traded here for, you know, a kill over toward to jungle in exchange for a kill onto the Aphelios is going to be rough. Uh, and here, crucially, in that early 2v2, right, we do see that Niski is able to 
bring owner with him, which means that Faker in the one for ones against Oyoa doesn't really have a large shot, but Faker stays alive. It was really good use of his aftershock there. Faker, he tanks fully the Lee Sin, then as soon as the aftershock falls off, he flashes out and jumps to the top side. Faker fully tanks up to like 10% of his life right there. Well, Faker's gonna not be able to do that just yet. Glacial Pot this time round, ticking. He gets away! El Yoya and Niski, they fumble it. They don't get that last hit. And that is the second mid lane gank that isn't working out. And the previous one, what I wanted to highlight in that replay as well before we went back to live, Owner being there to me is a sign that T1 is also catching on to what Matt did so well in game number one, which was snowball, 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 continuous aggression. Anyone with a low health bar around the turret is going to get taken down. And Owner, even though he was a little bit behind the play, you see T1 was still expecting it. T1 right now got that lead. Crucially, 15 CS plus a kill to Guma in the bottom lane. And that's uh, protect the president comp, raise the puppy, whatever you want to call it. Guma has started off incredibly well, already got a plate. Nearly securing his second play. Nearly trying to threaten with that Hex Flash. And look, Red, White, Guma wants to fight. This backup as well, because look, two members of T1 in the river, they're going to get an early Dragon. Yeah, overall, gold leads are talked about a lot in League of Legends, but concentration of gold is incredibly important. And especially when you have a comp like this that is so hyper-focused in one direction. Or owner going to be able to pick up the dragon also. Wards here protecting both entrances. They easily pick that one up off of the bottom lane push. And Chronicler, I get nervous when I look at Mad Lions this game because already they're behind in dragons and gold and kills. And then I think about how on earth does Kennen and Lissandra and Rel get through Karma, Maokai, Kasante. And even if they do, there's a Lulu Wild Goat that's back up. So there is so much zoning tools and control to buy time for Guma to melt through Mad Lions. And in the last game, they, they didn't need that, no, right? They, they didn't, didn't need Guma to be fed. They didn't need any of the frontliners to be in a great spot. Uh, and I think that Mad, unfortunately, if they fall too far behind in the early game, they're not going to be able to. We saw in the previous game that the amount of leads that they were able to generate uh, should have been, wasn't really working out, but should have been turned into a really big level of map control. As, oh, Niski. Well, Niski, still got that E if he needs it, still got the flash as well. We'll be able to get over the wall. Takes a little bit more of a trade, but yeah, again, Ona just kind of shadowing this middle lane, always yeah. around when every threat, whenever any threat is up. Cheeky Recall, gonna get spotted. Got the ultimate available. Why are you recalling there? Why are you in the bush? Niski gets taken down for a, in my opinion, unforgivable recall occasion. This is honestly devastating for Mad Lions. Not only does that give over full pressure for this Rift Herald, but bottom side, you then leave Guma alone. He was pushing Karzi into his own tower there. They send the rail back bottom side, and they're still making the play top. Looking for the initiation. chase has got the Maelstrom. Manages to get Zeus. He flashes over the wall. Chased by Chasey. Zeus still stays alive. Look at those fancy feet. Chasey's on the route. Not going to be able to find the kill just yet. Zeus still under the tower. Well, that's going on. 2v2 in the bottom lane. Guma Yushi, he's got himself that quiver. Looking for the crash down. Hilly turns his attention back to Kiri. He gets turned in to a munchkin. Finally, Zeus is down. The feathers are pulled backwards of the Moonlight Vigil. is dodged by the Feather Storm. There's no E available. Flash away from Guma and T1. They've got the first of the fight. Guma's looking for the next. The E comes back up. The cleanse keeps the chase alive. Kazi and Hilly got so close, but damn, they were so far. Now Niski's in trouble. Faker's running him down. Goes all out under the tower. The third proc in the queue flashed away from oh. underneath the tower and flashed one for one in the mid lane. And somehow Kazi escapes. Oh my goodness, it's blood all over the map, Trevor. Well done casting all three lanes at once. Bottom side, Karia does get back down to Guma and allow him to get not only another kill, but you just saw on your screen that huge minion wave that is going to die in front of the tower. Hillisang is going to be the one that gets there first, and money into Hillisang. Again, concentration of where your gold is going, not ideal here for Mad Lions. Oh, Hilly with the but, flop on the large corner. And by, Guma effectively here is 1v2, and by the time he starts this play, he starts being in it. Karia's still like halfway in the river, but once they're committed, they're just unable to get the damage down right. And I think in these all-ins, Thalios is so difficult to deal with, particularly if you don't have the CC from the Rel available. Yeah, he flashes this one here. So Guma Flash and Cleanse were both used. If there is one, you know, ray of hope or, or copium 
for Mad Lions. It is Injecting it to me, Kobe. <laughs> it is, it, it is that there. Are, <laughs> there are no sums on Guma, so, uh, you know, they called down owner and said the, the third and fourth summoner spell with Faker coming down to try and protect. Listen, 2,000 gold is the lead. I would like to ask the observers to quickly toggle over to the individual player golds when they get a chance. Nature's Gasp is thrown out. That 2,000 gold, 1,500 of it, 1,500 of that lead is with Guma. Kazi gets pushed all the way backwards from a beautiful engage from Ona. And that is three more kills to T1. It was just beautiful. And the tower. <laughs> and they got the Herald from, from way back, right? When Zayas was able to stay alive, uh, the rest of the team was like, good luck. You try and stay alive as long as you can. We know you're going to go down, but we're going to get the Herald. They didn't even need the Herald here. They could have left it in their pocket because the free v free goes disastrously wrong. And when you have a composition like this, and the Ephelios is this fed with, as you were pointing out, Trevor, yes. this much frontline yes. and two enchanters. Four kills and assist, as well as a 30 CS lead. Mythic completed already, and a Maokai that's at 3 1 and 3. My word, T1 have got all the tools they need to just let Guma once again bow down and destroy the Mad Lions. Uh, Niski just ulted Faker to get one extra tower shot worth of damage on the Cassante mid. And gave him the hats off, but here's what we were saying, you know, there's no summoner spells on Guma, that's why, you know, Mad Lions have that, you know, the Hopium or Copium, whatever you want to call it, of, of trying to make a play on him, but with the Maokai there to peel for him, <laughs> <laughs> the peeling Let's is go. too easy for T1. Owner and Carrier keep him safe and he takes him down. There was a lady in the crowd earlier that said she's waited 10 years to see Faker pick LeBlanc for me. I hope Cassante will do it quite as flashy to everyone else that's come here to Copper Box in London. Thank you for joining us. Right now, T1 are in a significant advantage. Two level lead here for Zeus over Hilly. The tower is under a little bit of pressure in a 1v2, but there is pretty significant wave flow once those minions do group up. Hilly steps in, look at the minimap. And again, congregation of T1 around that middle lane in Niski. It's also Abyssal Mask. Karma, right? Like in the previous game, we saw it on Faker. He, uh, on the Nautilus, got a lot of value of it. And even though the Catalyst was nerfed on this patch, we still see the value of it, particularly when you're a pick like the Karma that loves staying in lane for a long time, keeping your opponent under pressure. And it also means in situations like this, you're not going to be able to dive in. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the Abyssal Mass and the Evan Shroud last time too, they're getting these little things to amp all the other little sources of damage. Little on source the team. of damage? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who might you be referring to, Kobe? <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, let's talk a little bit about how Mad Lions do find their way back into this game. They've lost a tower, they're significantly behind. We already know it's going to be hard for them on the offensive to get to Guma. But how on earth but, do they claw this back? Yeah, see, that's the thing, though. That's the thing that was missing in the last game. Mad Lions, they, they stalled out, and they should have been setting up those more aggressive plays with the flashes and big playmakers that they do have on the team. This time around, you know, Niski's on the Lissandra to boot, so they've got even more to go for those really big setups. If Chasey has flash and Niski spellbooks over to his flash, like, that should be a guaranteed engage dive onto them. Especially with Rel follow-up here, that CC will last a very long time. Problem is you're so far behind so early on, the protection is really difficult to get yeah. through. And even the setup of the vision, which is your first setup to try and get those angles. Well, Faker's gonna start a fight, yep. Teleported in. Down a level, Hilly stepping forward. Not a lot of support yet from T1. The interrupt on the crash down allows Faker to escape. That was just beautifully executed. Yeah, unable to get anything done, even with Faker teleporting in and Hila being there, no opportunity. Yeah, I think the plan is very simple. Con it's kill Guma. It's not easy. Exactly. Concentrated gold there, Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> Visualized <laughs> nice. exquisitely. Okay. Plus 2,000. Chasey forced to flash defensively once more. A cannon running away with flash is nothing you ever want to see. But Zeus is the target. Nature's grasp is rattling across the Mad Lions. Zeus still stays alive. That shield from the E is huge. All out. We'll send Kazi packing. The feathers come back, but nobody is he dead lives. from T1. Nobody goes down. They get two kills and the Mad Lions are routed once more. They threw everything on the tank. Karma. That's not the target. And then Faker comes in, he Cassante ults Karzi out of the fight too, so they, they don't have their main damage source there. T1, that was a really nice little split there. They turn it around on the Mad Lions. They use that to engage against them and are able to get an extra one. Beautiful, beautiful team fight once again from T1. 
They've got themselves two dragons, they've got 11 kills, they've got a significant lead, and right now they are outclassing Mad Lions in every skirmish with or without the advantages. And you know what's super devastating about that fight? Yeah, T1 got an extra kill, right? Okay, well, we got Kennen. They also got the big flashes that Mad Lions yes. are really relying on. Niski is going to have to now be the one because he has the flash on Lissandra, uh, but Guma still has his flash, has his plans, and he's got his teammates. And even if Guma is out of position, as long as he has Flash and Clans, you're basically always playing one fight behind, right? You need to force those summoners, which in of itself I think is a big task, but then you need to be able to then get away from the fight because if he flashes and cleanses, you're probably not going to be able to win it, and then find another one of those angles. So for Mad Lions, they back really are against the wall, and I think it's going to require T1 leaving Guma alone or getting completely off guard by a cannon, by a Rel, or by a Lissandra getting that backline access. And I, I don't yet have confidence that Mad Lions can pull that off. We've seen two games already today where Chasey and, and Mad Lions have not necessarily been able to find those flanks specifically on the cannon. I think this game has kind of run away from them in terms of their ability to come back. So now it's, you're hoping for a mistake, you're hoping for a misstep. What we've seen from T1, what we expect from T1 in terms of their season, in terms of the last two years, the likelihood is incredibly low. So for Mad Lions now, calm themselves down. They have to try to find some sort of rhythm and momentum because this is the team that's now potentially on the verge of match point, assuming they can't pull some miracle comeback. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, everybody who watched the previous game, Trevor, are in full agreement with yeah. you. Because if the Mad Lions couldn't do it then, wow. it's going to be a lot more difficult this time around, where they don't have this ginormous lead and T1 are forcing summoners and, and ults out of them. And that's that, yeah, that's basically a guaranteed soul point here for T1, right? Like, you're gonna give a Hextech soul to an Aphelios because Karzi had to use his cleanse, yes. had to use his ultimate. Because of a Nyan Cat, right? Now, <laughs> yes, I understand that obviously on Karzi's side, had Guma or Ona continued to apply pressure after the Nature's Grasp, then there was kill threat. However, they didn't. So he just saw the Nyan 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 and needed to throw out the feathers in the cleanse. We're 30 seconds away. From Dragon. Whenever you say that, three. you have to do a little dance now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is, I think they're recording it. So it's like, yeah, that's we'll wait, a... we'll wait for the next ult where we can do it in unison, right? Right now. No, <laughs> I don't want to dance. Don't Listen, rope me into this. He won on the verge of a 2 0 crank. You owe, yeah. it a, you owe <laughs> London a dance. They definitely <laughs> okay. want to cheer that one. Okay, don't look. put pressure on me. Come on. Alioria and Niski, backed up by Hilly. Faker will get rooted in place, locked down, all out. Three members pushing forward. This isn't the highest damage trio. Niski gets knocked backwards from the third Q. Kazi's the target of Guma. Remember, no feathers. Remember, no cleanser may not matter. Kazi escapes with his life, but Faker does not. And under the tower, Guma takes a lot of damage while all that's going on. Now Chase is in trouble, forced to use that slicing maelstrom. He's rooted in place thanks to that top karma, trying to get the shurikens, trying to get the stuns. Under pressure as the middle lane is still being pushed by Guma, by Carrier. Algoria and Hilly arrive to the fray. Top lane continued to pressure as Mad Lions are looking at that inner top turret. While that's going on, the mid is still under pressure. This is Cross-mapping all day long, Kobe. Yeah, Goomba's going right through the front door while all this action is going on on the side lane. They actually finish the mid tower, oh, they finish Karzi. Oh, look at that damage. <laughs> Goomba and Garia knock on the front door, in? take down the inhibitor as well. Recall's being channeled here as Niski will finally get back. The bottom inhibitor turret is now the next focus. Faker has been able to TP in after being taken down. That gold lead is growing even larger. Before 20 minutes, the base is blown wide open. And just like G2 yesterday, Mad Lions today dropping game two in dominant fashion to the LCK opponents. <laughs> Paul, I like that, that was the reverse. I, I got like backwards. I you take control I got there. it backwards. Yeah, you, you take ownership, yeah, yeah, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dominant dropping of the game. <laughs> they they choked they the game. That <laughs> sucker I, I would out. never go to. I would never go to Quick You know me, but I'm glad you did. Can I tell you, it is so fun to be casting with you guys again. <laughs> I am having a blast, despite they, the fact that T1 is smashing me. They certainly threw that game one on the ground. <laughs> this, this one here. All right, Dragon number three, as you mentioned, T1 going to collect what is theirs. And yeah, Matt, I think you have to back off here. At this point, it's, it's either a very deep teleport flank coming in from either Chasey or Niski when a bot lane inhibitor is being pushed. We've seen over the years, even in this tournament, a lot of bot lane inhibitors leading to death and destruction. Uh, or it is going to require a stand at the Nexus uh -oh. turret as Faker. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Niski oh. took the gate, and we'll be able to escape. That Ring of Frost did a lot of work, but as I saw a member of Mad flying through that portal. Mad Lion starting group up. They feel the threat of a potential Baron. Remember, Super Minions into that middle lane. 
Not going to be the greatest in really setting up for Baron, but not only with the gold lead and what the pressure is going to apply, it also will allow them to set up for the soul, which is four minutes away. So T1 have just got a plethora of options and how they wish to taxi their way to the Nexus. Yeah, I mean, their options are so plentiful that we literally just watched the last two minutes was Faker deciding to go 1v3 kind of int and just take up three people's time. And T1 came yan, away with an yan, inhibitor yan, kill. Yan, 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 yan. Hillisang is caught out. Magnet Storm is dropped and he's left to the Wolves as it were. T1 get themselves an easy kill on the back of that nature's draft. And now in a five versus four, they peel back to Baron. Actually, five versus three, because Kazi's dealing with the supers. The Maokai ult, the most disappointing way to get caught. The slow death coming towards you. All right, El Yoya, he's got the hopes. T1 stole a Baron last time around. Can El Yoya replicate? 3,000 hit points going low. Niski's coming as well. Chase is coming as well. Two and a half thousand. Sonic Wave connects. Hold your breath. Ladies, gentlemen, everybody else, Polymorph is going to be enough to interrupt, and the Baron is just beautifully secured. Chasey is done dump before any Maelstrom can be channeled. A teleport to the inner top lane turret, and Zeus is there leading the charge for T1. It is just exquisite control. And sometimes T1 Baron setups scare the fans to death. This time around, really cleanly done. Keep it at a uh, safe health total. The carrier goes in with the heal, gets the polymorph. They burst it down. No steal option available. Yeah, I think the honorable thing from T1 there would be to for the give it. Yeah, that, that, give that it would to be him. fair. Bad huh? lines flipped it for you. You give you a spike fight. It would have been it because I will say, as a fan of both League of Legends and Mad Lines. That Baron did not um, give me that same level of, oh, this is scary, as the game one did. Where, of course, Ono was able to jump in. But look, this Red Bull Baron power play already at plus 3k. They already had supers in the middle lane that inhibitor will be spawning in a minute and a half. The top lane has just been taken out. And at 22 minutes with Baron, this gigantic gold lead, we're two minutes away from Sol, so my instinct is telling me, get the Sol, and then push for the final uh, hits on the Nexus. Might end up doing that. Considering it's T1, I wouldn't be surprised if they just ran it with five people towards the mid lane and try to end the game before they end up taking the Dragon. The Dragon is kind of the uh, be-all, end-all, right? Like, Hextech Soul provides so much utility, particularly when you have a pick like the Aphelios. And right now for Mad, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of options here. Uh, unfortunately, as only one inhibitor, not even with a turret left standing. Bear in mind, Guma and Keria have not died a single time this game. 7-0-3, 0-0-11. They have been the proactive team. They have been the ones starting the fight nearly, you know, what, 56, sorry, 75, 80% kill participation. It has been about them. Protect the present has worked beautifully. Gentlemen, whenever there is a draft run back, you have to decide which is the team that did the salty run back and, <laughs> and who was just right. <laughs> what? 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 Down the bottom lane, here comes Chasey from behind. Slacing Maelstrom can finally get some targets. Nature's Grasp will at least hold them in place. I don't think that Maelstrom's been Ooh. enough. Zeus is low, but where is Guma? So far untouched, so far undamaged, so far unkillable. T1 put together three, four quick kills and ace Mad Lions inside their base within Baron Buff. T1 dominate game two. And T1 are one win away from a rematch with Gen G in the upper bracket. What a dominant performance as Mad Lions were crushed from that bottom lane. So in summary, T1 were right, Mad Lions were salty. Oh, with so the Afel back. Aphelios is being banned? That's going to be my guess? Aphelios is indeed a problem. T1, massive stuff this time around. So much more clean. And we didn't get to talk about it that much, but I really want to talk a little bit about Owner because I think his defensive play was the big difference maker between the previous game. Because even though his Kha'Zix was big and the catches that he got were a big part of what allowed he want to stay in the game. But on his Maokai, every time that there was an attempt from Mad Lions to snowball the early game like they did, he was always there. And when Maokai is able to get a lead on a game with his ultimate, with his saplings, it's so hard to come back. And I think in game one, Alioria really had a significant impact on the early game. Ganking bottom lane, working with Kazi and Hellasang to accelerate that lead. 